Is this the future of Ozempic? Not this exactly, this is just a random tablet. But at this stage, we all know about Ozempic. If you don't know what Ozempic is, click here and go watch one of the many videos I have done on this topic. But here's the thing. Ozempic and other medications that are similar to it, like Munjaro, are all injections. You need to inject the medication into yourself, usually once a week, which is quite often for an injection because it's a bit invasive and not many people like needles. So it would make sense that if we had a tablet form of Ozempic, then it would probably be a game changer. And I'm here to tell you that that is in fact where we are heading. There is currently only one tablet version of these medications available and it is called Ribelsis. That is the brand name for it. And when I did some investigation, I have found that there are many more medications in the pipeline currently undergoing research. So the future seems to be out with the injections and in with the tablets. This will take a bit of time and I will continue to keep my eye on the situation. But for now, let's focus on Ribelsis, the tablet version of Ozempic that is currently available for treating type 2 diabetes. Hello everyone, it's Carmony from Long Game Health. Welcome back to another week on the channel. If you're new here, I put out a new video every Friday that can help educate you on health in some way. So subscribe and check out my other videos while you're at it. So Ribelsis came onto the scene in 2019 when it was approved for medical use in the United States. And the thing to know here is that Ribelsis is the brand name. The medication that it contains is called semaglutide, which is the exact same medication that is in Ozempic and also Wegovy. So all three, same medication. Ozempic and Wegovy are injections and Ribelsis is a tablet. So in theory, much easier for someone to take. So semaglutide, it belongs to a class of medications called GLP-1 analogs, which stands for glucagon-like peptide 1 analogs. And these medications are synthetic versions of a hormone that is naturally found in your body called glucagon-like peptide 1. Now your body can make this hormone, but in some situations, like people with type 2 diabetes, this hormone becomes less efficient. So it's a hormone that plays a role in blood sugar control because when you eat food, it signals for your body to make and release insulin into the bloodstream, which leads to reduced blood sugar levels. Go watch my video on blood sugar control for more information on how exactly insulin works. Now, increasing insulin levels is great for people with type 2 diabetes because their blood sugar levels are high. Now, another thing that these medications do is slow down the rate of stomach emptying. When you eat food, your stomach will periodically empty its contents into the intestines, which is where all your nutrients get absorbed usually. So when you slow down stomach emptying, nutrients like glucose will enter the bloodstream at a slower rate, and this is good because it can prevent blood sugar spikes after you eat. Now, if you have type 2 diabetes, you definitely want to avoid blood sugar spikes because these cause damage to blood vessels and nerves if they keep happening. Stomach emptying slowing down also means that food will stay in the stomach for longer. And this is one of the reasons that weight loss is actually associated with these medications as well. So that's how ribelsis will work by mimicking the effects of this GLP-1 hormone. Now, one thing you may be wondering is why most of these medications are injections and not just tablets already. Well, hormones, they're a type of protein, and unfortunately, all proteins do not do well in acidic environments, which is an issue if you need something to go through the stomach. Your stomach acid is extremely acidic, and there are also enzymes in the stomach that break down protein to help digestion. So both of these things essentially destroy semaglutide or any of the other GLP-1 analog medications, which makes it very hard to have a tablet version of the medication because it has to go through the stomach. So researchers have had to spend a lot of time figuring out how to get around this issue and they seem to have found a solution. The Ribelsis tablets contain semaglutide, but they also have something called snack, 
which stands for this lovely chemical name that I'm not going to bother saying. But essentially, when these tablets get to your stomach and meet your stomach acid, the tablet will break apart and the snack that is inside the tablet will actually for a short period of time make your stomach acid less acidic, which will protect the semaglutide from being destroyed. And this allows the medication to get absorbed into your blood. Yay for science. Now, this is an amazing development, but it's not perfect yet. And you will find that the Ribelsis tablets need some specific conditions when you are taking them. So, for example, they need to be taken on an empty stomach. They need to be taken with at least 120 mils of water because any less and the tablet actually doesn't break down enough to release that special snack component. And finally, you can't consume anything, not water, food, or even other medications for at least half an hour after taking the medication because the researchers have found that these all reduce absorption of the medication by up to 34%. So it's a bit of a picky medication, but some people may prefer these to taking an injection. So the next question to answer then would be, is the tablet form just as good as the injection? And well, thankfully there have been some clinical trials for me to look through. There was a series of trials called the Pioneer Studies, and they compared how effective the tablet form of Ozempic was compared to placebo, which is essentially no medication treatment. They also compared it to other tablet-based medications for type 2 diabetes and other injectable forms of GLP-1 analogs. And I've also linked these studies in the description as well. But to summarize, what these trials found was that the tablet version of Ozempic seemed to be more effective than some of the existing tablet-based treatments for type 2 diabetes at reducing blood sugar levels and improving blood sugar control. When compared to placebo, it had very good improvements to blood sugar control and also weight loss in patients with type 2 diabetes. And when compared to other injectable GLP-1 analogs, it was deemed not inferior, which essentially means the tablet isn't exactly more effective or better than the injectable versions, but they also aren't much worse. So they seem to be giving similar effects at the moment, which I think is a good thing. Now, in terms of side effects though, the biggest issue with these medications has been the nausea. And unfortunately, the tablets don't seem to give any improvement on that. The trials found similar side effects comparing the tablet to the injection-based versions of other GLP-1 analogs. And it was actually discovered that the nausea for the tablets hung around a bit longer when compared to injections. And it is significant nausea. It's enough for people to drop out of the trials. Now, at this stage, the clinical trials have been done only on patients with type 2 diabetes. And while they did show weight loss effectiveness, it was only in this specific subset of patients, which means at this stage, there isn't enough evidence for use of the medication outside of type 2 diabetes to be approved. But it does seem that there are lots of trials currently going on, and not just with the tablet form of Ozempic, but other new medications too that would also be tablets. So I do think it's just a matter of time before we see these start to enter the market and they'll probably flood the market eventually because obviously they would be very, very profitable. Now at this stage, it's a great potential therapy for people with type 2 diabetes who can't manage their condition with diet and lifestyle changes and where other medications have failed or people who would just really rather not have the injections. Now in terms of using this for weight loss, it's not approved yet, so you probably won't have access until more research and trials come out. Even then, I am a bit worried about a huge amount of people running to these medications as a magic bullet for weight loss, when in reality, this should be taken alongside proper nutrition and physical activity to make sure that you don't lose too much muscle. It's really not as simple as just taking the medication and continuing with your life but I have done a whole video on this, so click here to catch up on that. Now I'll wrap things up here, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. Please give a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I will see you next week, and as usual, keep playing the long game.